My name is Yumi Solale, the proprietress of Family International School. My name is Mrs. Beshi. I'm the head of primary Family International School. My name is Mrs. Adigbola Helen. I'm the principal of Femlin High School. The school was founded January 2011. With very few students, the school started with nursery and primary school. But after five years, we exit to secondary school. So the school has French, nursery, primary, and high school. It's an approved school under Lagos State Ministry of Education. So we do WAEC, NECO, Beke, FEDRA, and some other external exams. Femlin High School is a core educational secondary school established on the 13th of September 2015 by Mrs. Olaleye Eunice to provide a balanced and comprehensive educational curriculum for the full development of students intellectually and socially. The school uh, mission is to educate the children in the changing world. What do we mean by a changing world? Our motto is education for success in a changing world. What do we mean by changing world? Education is changing every day. Changing is the only thing that is constant. So, gone are the days when the, the teaching is only at the four corners of the classroom, where you use a whiteboard marker alone, even before it was chalkboard. But now we're into a digital world where the class is digitalized. So most of the time we do more of digitals because the children of nowadays believe in what they see. So and that scene is really helping us in order to produce uh, good and uh, successful ones. So we are an IT school. We've been on a CBT exam in our school for like seven years, in which our family exam is on CBT. And what are the benefits? CBT is a very good one because it makes children read, fully prepared, and able to manage time because they know the moment is their time, the system will lock them out. And it will give them their results immediately. So when they see the results, they will know that, oh, this is my performance. I need to work more on my theory or next. So the school I'm, uh, is an IT school. We don't joke with our IT. And the school is prepared for future development. And we always believe in a growth and change every time and every minute. In our school, we do a lot of things. We have a lot of facilities in this school. We have the music, we have a lot of extracurricular activities we engage the children in. Like we have the music club where the children learn music. We even have the four addictions. We have the diction teacher concerning that the work on our children's diction. We have the computer room where the children are taught computer science. And in our classroom, we have a lot of facilities as well. We have the, the television where we do the vision. It's not just about the physical teaching. We do about the online teaching as well. That makes our school unique as well. So it's, we give online work as well. We do our work, the audiovisual, the visual work as well. And in most of the, some of these clubs, we have the speed maths, which help to boost the children's mathematics. We have the, the, the chess club. 
the, the child of school where the children are taught it's still on uh, about mathematical calculation as well so and then we have a uh, oh there's so many facilities actually even though our playground uh, even well equipped as well Family Life School is established and organized to prepare each student for academic and personal excellence in an ever-changing world through the development of the potentialities, knowledge, competencies, behavioral patterns, and value system of every child. Our vision is to be the best in providing world-class education with a reputation for excellence. And our core values are learning through innovation, pursuing excellence, growing by learning. Here in family, we we'll raise a total child. As we all know that we live in a competitive world. And as a school, it is vital to understand how we can give our children the best tools to cope with the challenges life will bring along their way. And how do we achieve this? Number one, we give them responsibility. As we know that this is essential if we want to raise a successful 21st century child. We ensure that they are given responsibility in and outside 
the school to ensure that they take good habits along with them as they go on in life the number the second thing we do is that uh, as educators as teachers we set good example the third thing we do here in Femlin is that we give holistic education we give our students a well-rounded education the 21st century world is one where the child needs more than maths and english to be successful and for this reason we involve them in sports in music in coding depending on their strength and this gives them a greater chance of success it is vital to broaden their horizons and focus on more than just the traditional subjects that is what we specialize in at Femlin. our shared vision is to raise excellent godly and well-rounded children who will attain their highest potential in life and become lifelong learners apart from striving for excellence in the traditional subjects we give them the opportunity to excel in many other avenues we possess sports facilities including basketball courts, the volleyball courts, we have the table tennis and we have lots of indoor games. We have the chairs, we have the scrabbles, name it, we have all of them. At Family, we are committed to excellence and we are passionate about the holistic development of our students. We use education as a tool for societal transformation. This is all we do here in Femlin High School. To start with, you know then our parents have time for us. But most of the parents of nowadays, they are not available. They are absent. Even those that are available, they are not present. They might be there, but are they ready to do the right thing? Some of our parents see it as, oh, this is the modern world. You don't do this to my child. I don't. Do then when we were young, we really know that our parents, they scold. They give us eye contact. They give body language. But the children of our nowadays, <laughs> if you do any eye contact, they would ask you, is anything your hair? I so they don't really see any and i see it as from home i see it as from home those are the informal education those are informal teaching that parents should take them at home but most of our parents they are not there it's the house girl that trains some children it's the drivers that train some children because maybe the mother travel to this place the husband's like this and then nobody cares who are some children that have the key to their house? They are the director of themselves. They open the house when they want to come in the morning. They go back home when they want to go home and lock their door. They are not nobody to supervise. So a lot is happening. And broken home is another issue. Broken home. Many homes now, you know, the effect of broken home is uh, it's large in the society. Very large in society. Because, you know, we're talking about at home. But we forgot that homes make the community. And the school, you know, will come from different homes. So most of the time, broken home is another thing. The father will not be there. The father train alone. Some the mother will not be there. The father is the only one there. All manner of things is really affecting the society. to take a very large space in training of a child in your body they will say oh, you can be more by your loan I will interpret myself that one person give back to a child but the whole community train the child but the community where we are now you dare not talk to another person's child anyhow you dare not correct anyhow People like us that are an educationist, you know, when you are going, you see something wrong, you would like to correct. And the next thing they say, 
I believe this woman is a teacher because they know you are the only one that can see something and you cannot look away. But the society now are not helping anybody. They will be seeing something wrong. The child will be doing something wrong beside you. You cannot talk. You cannot stop it. So whatever happening to her will reflect on B. Because we are together. We need ourselves. We grow together. So we need to stand to our responsibility as a society. Every home needs to stand to the training of a child. Every community needs to stand to the training of the children in their environment. That is the way forward. Lija should be the best place to work on moral. But uh, you know the children of nowadays, the knowledge, the media, in fact the information there is uh, polluting the the godly information. You know, you know these children. Do you know that some children will tell you church is a scam? They tell you it's a scam because of what they are seeing, what they have access to. Not during our time, your information is limited to your environment. But now, the, the information is in the hair. They can be hearing what is happening in European country in Nigeria immediately. So all those things is affecting the, the religion aspect because majority of us goes to church and there is no uh, church that will be teaching you to do evil to another one. If you are not going to church, you will go to mosque. The Muslims, they will teach you to be a, of a good person in your society. But are we really doing it? No. So, if we really want these children to learn from the religion, it will start from adults. Because these ones learn from, uh, that is a, what would I call it? They learn from what they see. There are some learning that is unconscious. Unconscious, they are learning. They are picking it. But we think uh, nobody will tell a child to go and lie. You don't sit a child down and teach how to lie. But they see you doing it. You are told, you said, tell them I'm not around. You are passing an information. Tomorrow the child will do more than what you have just taught him or her. So, <laughs> religion, well, God will help us. To be sincere with you, I saw the person, is, she's not a parent, she's an auntie. She's a real parent. A child comes to school late, she is late. The school have their own side, but on the parents shouting, the child came to school 8.30. 8.30 is after assembly, sir. An assembly is the first stage on their day. And information go through from assembly. That is the gathering where you will be able to pass a lot of knowledge on the assembly. Assembly starts 7.40. And they will have end assembly before 8.30. So that means you are teaching that child to come into the class at any time. You are teaching that child to, to disobey the school policy. I believe when they register in that school, the school will have given them the policy of resumption time. But you are not keeping to it. So if you are teaching a child and for that kind of a parent, you are talking to rudely. To the school management, to the teachers of your children, to in the presence of your child, how will that child obey the system when the parents cannot obey? I believe the peer, that sister, she was wrong. She she know what she's saying because it's not right. You are late. You are late. That is it. Eight thirty. When the school says seven thirty or seven forty, it's late coming. No other name than late coming, and that will affect the child because. Even it's not good for parents that you are paying and you, they are trying to give you full uh, spare meal and now you are just sorting yourself out of uh, some vital information. And if we allow that, it will influence on some other children. 
if the school do not take their step, it will affect other children. Because if you cannot cover it from one person, you know this teenager. Before you see it, all of them will be doing it. Hmm. To be sincere with you, the government needs to see to the policy of discipline in the school. We remember when we were young, when you are doing something wrong, and they say, oh, I will report you to your teacher in you know, six times. Or you are coming, you are coming late to school, you can you saw your teacher coming, you will run. But children of nowadays, in fact, they will go side by side with the teacher because they know you cannot do anything for them. So the I'm not saying beating is everything, but government should see to it and be flexible about it. Let discipline be very, very firm in the school system. Lack of discipline is affecting the system. Part of what is affecting them in their exam. In the exam and there are many things that government need to see government need to see to the standard of the school number one challenge of the massive failure in the school is the system how do i mean by system you see schools Many schools, schools, people open schools, government are not seen to schools that are supposed to be in existence. Government are not really strict with the policy that guided, that are supposed to guide a school. Now, this external exams here and there, you see in some schools, you will have numbers when you are in SS1. When they get to SS2, they will leave the school. They will go for, let me not call it names, because I don't want to be quoted. They will go out there, go and find the means of jumping that class and go and register for WAEC. They will pack them to some schools to go and do exam. The child I did not cover, I have a case here that I said the child must cover a particular class because of that they pulled the child out took her to another school and she wrote why with them what do you expect so and there are some this underage of primary because i have primary too i'm not run primary school parents of nowadays don't want in fact i have primary six very few schools have primary six and in that primary six we are always few because majority of them want to go from primary five in fact if you allow them from primary four yes and i ask them where are they running to in fact to the extent that some children parents will go and adjust the age because they want them to enter university before the age of 16. They will, i know somebody who adjusted the age to enter university where are we running to <laughs> then people reduce their age but parents of nowadays are hardened to the age and you see them at the end of wire you will see them they will be running about the child is supposed to be in, still be in secondary school they finish 15 they will rush them out rushing from primary five to secondary school at the age of eight nine by the time they are 14 15 they finish the wire and you will see them they cannot enter university a year they are still and and high hands the devil's workshop mother will go to work father will go to work instead of them at that age to be in the school they are at home doing nothing and they are part of the society problem but you know when you are saying it some of the parents excuses ah you know this our university strike today strike tomorrow the four years will become six years and when they are looking for job, they will be putting a boundary on the age. So I don't want them to go beyond this age. They they run to it. 
so that they will finish at the right time so government needs to bring back primary six bring back primary six maturity is very very important in, in education maturity a child that is not matured we have age we have ages there's some age that's supposed to be in the at the nursery level that's some that's supposed to be in the primary that's some that's supposed to be in junior school or senior school in secondary but now you will see them and that's why you will see the majority of them they are not matured in fact even the some of the university graduates are not matured they are not they are not <laughs> employable they finished the university fine but you see this i know you get and finish and i'm looking at that somebody who's supposed to be year two or year one and that's why you they go for an interview you will see them they just talk to them the boss talk to them like this they will be shedding tears they are crying because they're babies they're not mature so where are we running to where are we running to so if uh, government can help us put things in place that uh, parents will not be able to jump classes that would be very excellent of government and that will help if they cannot jump from primary then it will not it will affect the numbers of years in the secondary and also affect our tertiary institution for the parents i would say parenting is very the key they should be there for their children. Don't leave your children for another person to train. Don't train a stranger. Know your child. For the society, I would say the society should contribute to the moral of these ones. Don't see it as I'm less concerned. After all, she's not my child. You can never tell if she will be part of your child's life tomorrow and for the religious uh, body please do more and help us help us to teach this one a moral let them know what is right and let them be the doer of the world not only the hearer alone let's follow it up and uh, i think for the government government our appreciative government can come with YXCBT to help a long way. You can see the jam. You can see that jam. You cannot manipulate it. So if we can come out with that, it's a very nice thing. And let parents see to the policy and be flexible about it. Discipline is paramount. Uh, society, we are paying for the man's failure. In the home men are no more there mother alone single mother are everywhere and if you want to prove it bring a child that was trained from the home of a uh, father and mother and the one that was raised by a single mother you will see the difference you will see the difference because when your mommy said i will beat you we know how mommy beat you but when your father said, boy, I will kill you, you will sit tight. Because when daddy say that, you know daddy mean it. Let me cite an example. Mommy's phone is everybody's phone. But who dare touch daddy's phone anyhow? No. The respect is there. You know, because we know daddies are friends. Doesn't mean they do not love them. But when it comes to discipline, men take the upper hands but when the father is not there again and the child goes to a level the wife the mother will not even be able to handle the child again whether boy or girl so fathers are absent fathers are leaving their duty to the mother fathers should not just be absent on their duty they should please see to the training of their children should not leave it alone for the mother woman cannot do it alone we need their support we need them there are some areas that is the father that will be able to curb or control that the control of the mother will not be feminine so 
Father should hand up to the eyes of Thank you. Thank you.